Good morning, everyone. Uh, we've been in a series over the last number of weeks called I Am a Disciple. And this is something that God continues to work within me. And, and I, I really want to even preface this message with this. I believe that we are to take note, to, to listen, to, to lean in. Um, this series is an important series, a very important series, I believe, in what God is calling us to individually and as a church. When we say we're a follower of Christ, it's not a flippant decision. It's not, I believe that what I hear is somehow true. It's a, a commitment of our life to God. To be a disciple is an important and all-in decision. And that's what we've been working ourselves through during this series. So if you've missed one, uh, if maybe you couldn't attend in person or, or maybe you didn't catch it online, I want you to go back. Please go back and, and, and you can find it on our website or our app and go back and listen to the weeks you missed. Because this is so important, um, I believe, into where God is leading us even as a church. What we're going to talk about today is unity. And, and, and I want to give you a story, um, uh, kind of an example, an illustration of, of what unity looks like. And I was so encouraged as I watched this happen. As many of you know, last year we, we walked through a really difficult time when the flood hit here in town. And, you know, we COVID thing had just started and all of a sudden, boom, this flood happens. And then nobody dreamed, right? I mean, uh, that this kind of thing could happen. And many of you had homes that were just devastated. Um, some people we, we heard about lost their homes completely. And it was a very, very difficult time. But one of the encouraging things that, that I got to be a part of and to watch, and it was so encouraged by, was the unity that was in the churches. Um, I was surprised, to be honest, but encouraged. And I know, I know that God's power, God's strength, God's guidance was behind all of it. And, and, and I think that even as we walk through today and, and what I believe God wants to share with us today, I think you'll find that, that the hearts were in the right place and the God's unity showed up. But I, there was at least, I don't know, seven, eight, nine, maybe even 10 churches at different points in times that were together working, handing out drywall. We had thousands of buckets that were donated and like I think 7,000 pieces of drywall. And we worked together to get those out in the community where there was need. And I can tell you without fail, there wasn't, I, I can't remember an act of selfishness during that time. The churches that were truly involved, they were working together, helping store the drywall if it was going to rain or, or helping hand it out and, and saying, no, I can take care of this and I can take care of that. There was this big spreadsheet with all kinds of names on it and households that had been hurt. And we literally worked our way down and we would just say, okay, oh, I got the next one. And we would, we would go out and help the different families. And it was, it was so encouraging to watch and just incredible unity in helping those that were hurting. There was no territorial thing things that came up. People weren't trying to grab people for their church. None of that took place. We were really working, and I believe God empowered unity. It was beautiful. I have new friends to this day that I stay in contact with because of what God did during that time and because of the unity that he brought. That's what we're going to talk about. But I want to start this morning with really two questions, and I want us to think about these two questions as we walk through uh, our time together. First question is, what does unity look like? What does unity look like? And the second question is, why is unity so important? What does unity look like and why is unity so important? Keep those in the back of your mind. We're gonna be looking in John 17 and I wanna give you the context here of, of what's happening. So Jesus is about to, to end his ministry here on earth. He knows he's going to be crucified. He knows he's going to rise again. He's going to go be with his father. And he's with the disciples, but he, he's praying to his father, to his heavenly father. And, and as, we, as we look at this prayer, I want you to take note and, and I want you to feel the weight. So the tendency is to read this almost poetically, story form type of thing. But there's huge weight here. And I want you to feel this weight of what Jesus is praying and what's important to him as he is getting ready to, to leave. That's where we pick it up. We're in John 17, starting at verse 11. It says this, Now I am departing from the world, this is Jesus, they are staying in this world, talking about the disciples, but I am coming to you. Holy Father, you have given me your name. Now protect them 
by the power of your name so that they will be united just as we are. So he's getting ready to leave um, and he begins to pray, God, you've given me your name. You've given me those things that are of you, your characteristics, those things that make up who you are. God, you've imparted those to me. Jesus is speaking and he says, now I, you know, I, I, I've imparted those to them and I want you to protect them by the power of your name so that they'll be united. I want to give you a quick story here and I think this will help understand a little bit. This is, this is a, a rough uh, example of, 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 and I think it will help. The illustration will help you understand. So when I was growing up, and I'm sure your parents did this to you. I did it to my kids. I tried not to do it too often, but there were conversations that we would have. But I remember a conversation with my father that, um, that went something like this. Gene, um, you're going to be involved in whatever it was, whether it was at work or at school, or maybe it was even at the youth group at church or whatever. Gene, I want you to remember you carry the name LaForge. So as you go and conduct yourself, remember that. And I did that to my children. Kyle, Christina, as you go out, you, don't forget you represent us. You're a LaForge. You represent that name. And so um, the characteristics that make up who God is, his love and his patience and his kindness and his grace and his mercy, those things that make up who God is, he had imparted to, and, and, and Jesus, it was part of who Jesus was. Jesus is here on earth. He's teaching the disciples. He's imparting he, those things to the disciples. And now he's asking, he knows he's going to leave. He's saying, God, would you protect them by the power of your name? Those things that, who are, that, that make up who you are, would you protect them by the power of your name so that they are united. And it makes sense, right? I mean, those things that are of God, if we were all tuned into exactly what those things were, what would happen? We would be united, right? And I believe that's what happened during the flood is we had churches. And I believe those churches, their hearts were in the right place. And God showed up. And so we were sharing with each other. We were giving to each other. We were doing whatever it took to help those who were hurting. Our focus, our focus is in the right place. And God's power and the unity that comes from him showed up. And I believe that's what he's talking about here. In fact, if we go back a few chapters in John 14, 8. Um, so this is Jesus again. Um, in John 14, 8, uh, just a few chapters prior, it says, Jesus replied, I have, been, I have been with you all this time, Philip, and yet you still don't know who I am. Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. So why are you asking me to show him to you? See, what happens is when God comes into our lives and he transforms us and he, and, and he renews us, we are made into the image of his son, Jesus Christ. If you've seen, and, and Jesus said this, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And, and it, I believe as God grows us, as God, who God is, um, the things that make up who God is, and the things that he imparted to his son Jesus, the things that Jesus imparted to us, those, the growth that takes place, the transformation that takes place, we end up looking an awful lot like our heavenly father, right? So if you've seen me, man, may it be true that those things that you see that come out of me, those things, the way that I think, the way I conduct myself, God, may it represent your name. May it be like you, right? Let's keep going. Verse 20 says, I am praying not only for these disciples, but also for all who will ever believe in me through their message. You should be encouraged, right? You should be encouraged. Jesus is praying for you and I right now, right? This, this is something that, that, that Jesus is, is, is he's praying this prayer. He is thinking of us. I'm praying not only for these disciples, but all who will ever believe in me through their message. Verse 21, it says, I pray that they will be one just as you and I are one. As you are in me, Father, and I am in you. And may they be in us so that the world will believe that you sent me. And, and, and I love this, the, the, the verse 21 here, I love it. Um, may, may they be one as God, you and I are one. Jesus is praying that. And you know that there's unity. I mean, the, the thoughts that Jesus had are going to be the thoughts that his father had. The direction that Jesus is going is going to be the direction that his father intended. The way that Jesus would act or react is going to be the, how God would want him to act or react. They're, they're one, right? 
And, and he's praying here uh, that, that we would be one just as he and the Father are one. May that transformation, may that renewal, that may that be made new, who we are as disciples, as that's taking place, may, it, uh, may we be one, right? So that, and this is so important, so that the world will know that you sent me. May, may we be of one heart and one mind as followers of Jesus Christ, so that the world will know that you sent me. Now, I want to bring up a diagram here. This is a diagram we've used from time to time. It's the unity model. And th th it's important. I'm just going to briefly, quickly go through this. But there, there are these circles, right? And this, the first circle is the core. And these are our core beliefs. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. God. God created everything. He gave us his Son. His Son came and died for our sins. We had... We, there had to be a price paid for our sins. Jesus' blood covered our sins. When we accept him as our Lord and Savior, those sins are forgiven. We, we now can have a relationship with God because of the blood of Jesus Christ. That when Jesus left, he left us the Holy Spirit to guide and to lead us, to, to convict us, to direct us, to empower us. Those things are at core of what we believe, right? And there's commands, that Jesus' teachings. We talked about earlier in this series how as, as disciples of Christ, we adhere to, we, we obey his commands, we adhere to those teachings, right? And so that's, that's at the core. Um, we're in the word. We're spending time in prayer. We're asking God to transform us. We are doing our best to, to be kind and, and to, the, the, to allow the fruits of the Spirit to work in us and flow through us, right? We're doing those things. We're being obedient. That's part of that core in those commands that God has given us, right? But as we get out to the, the other circles, there's matters of conscience. And what that's talking about is maybe God, maybe there's TV shows that as I watch, the Holy Spirit says, you know what? Where you are in your walk right now, um, that's not helpful, is it? In fact, that's distracting, isn't it? And so God begins to convict, convict me individually, not to watch that or not to read that or not to be part of something or to to be about something maybe maybe it's maybe it's helping somebody down the street that God lays it on my heart and you know what God I've got to go down and I've got to help those people they, he's laid it on my heart I've seen a situation where those are matters of conscience right in other words it doesn't mean that everybody um, can't watch those shows. It doesn't mean everybody has to go help that neighbor that God has placed on my heart. It doesn't mean that those things that maybe don't belong in my life that God's convicted me from. It doesn't mean everybody has to get rid of those things, right? Those are matters of conscience, and the Holy Spirit guides us and directs us individually in our walk, right? And then there's disputable matters, right? Um, there's those things that, that we can, we look at Scripture, even in interpretation of Scripture, and it's things that um, they're not core, but many churches will disagree on it. Those are just disputable matters. And then there's flat out opinions, right? There's things that, you know, I just don't like this, right? I, I don't care for this. In fact, as I look and we watch the news or we are on Facebook and man, it makes us, they're just our opinions, right? We can't tie it back to something that is core in scripture. Here's, here's where what Jesus is talking about, that, that we as the church are being um, united. We're being united about those, around those things that are core. Those things that are, that are, um, that are, are can't be changed. That they're, they're not going to be changed. We look at the truth of God's word and this is what we believe. Those things are core to our belief and we can't veer from those, right? But some of this other stuff, um, matters of conscience, disputable matters, and even opinions, um, we're not supposed to be dwelling on that. We're not supposed to be focusing on that. And, and hear my heart here. Um, and this is one of those areas where as we walk through, it can be taken wrong. And I don't want you to take it wrong. I want you to hear my heart. But if you look at things that churches tend to jump up and down and scream about, disagree on, debate on, um, oftentimes they're matters of conscience, disputable matters, or opinions, and um, and I think sometimes um, the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ doesn't come flying through, right? We've got off focus. Um, I believe in many cases we're led by the enemy to get off focus, and 
God's heart is man. I want them to be united, but they've got to be united around those things that are core, core to who I am, core to my character, core to what the gospel is all about. And I think you see that in the New Testament. He's praying for that in these disciples. He's praying for that for you and I, is that, man, God, give them that that same mind, that same heart, the same heart, that the thing that brought you and I unity, the thing, the things that, that that brought Jesus in unity with His Father, the things that He's He has shown and He's shared with the disciples. God, bring that, and may that be what they're about. God, give them unity so that the world will know that You sent me. Verse twenty-two: I have given them the glory You have You gave me, so that they may be. Uh, one as we are one. I am in them and you are in me. May they experience such perfect unity that the world will know that you sent me and that you love them as much as you love me. Um, this giving them the glory, this, it's, it's sharing the nature of God, right? You're, it's, it's, it's about us being transformed. Um, Living in and even living for and in, in, in this love that's that spoke of here in verse 21, it's those things working in us, right, and flowing through the through us. Um, listen to this. It says, "I have communicated to all those who believe or shall believe in me the glorious privilege of becoming sons of God, that being all adopted children of the same Father, they may abide in peace, love, and unity." That's what it means when he says, give them the glory, that we have been adopted um, and, and, and very much, even going back to last week and what Pastor Eric was talking about, that God loves us. He accepts us. We are adopted sons and daughters. The best of what God has, um, he wants to give to us. That was, that's what it means to share in that glory. And may they, because of that, may they experience such amazing unity that the world will know. There it is again. The world will know that you sent me and that you love them as much as you love me. If we go back even to chapter 13 of John, the same book, and look at verse 35, it says, Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. In love, you go back to chapter 13 of 1 Corinthians, love um, is patient and kind, right? Love, love uh, doesn't look for its own way. Love is not envious or boastful. Right? It, we, we, when we love each other, there's a unity that shows up and people know that we're disciples. And I believe, and even as it said in the verse prior, they will know, Right? That, that, that God sent his son and that there's truth in that because of the way that love works in us and that that love works through us. And I believe it shows up in unity. Verse 24 says, Father, I want these whom you have given to be with me where I am. Then they can see all the glory you gave me because you loved me even before the world Begin. So we're continuing in this thought process of verses 22 and 23. Here we are. We are God's children's children. We are followers or disciples of Jesus. Um, and, and he's transforming us. He's growing us. He's preparing us for eternity with him. He's transforming. He's, 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 he's changing us. He's renewing us. And we're becoming more and more like him, right? Being prepared for eternity. And this is actually a reality of every believer. When we become a disciple of Christ, we're adopted, as we talked about earlier, into the family of God. He's working in us and he desires to work through us. Our lives are to be glorifying to him. Um, and it, with the final objective, right, of what? Spending eternity with him. Seeing him in his glory. 1 Corinthians 2.9 says this. Listen to this. This is what the scripture means when they, when, it, when they say, No eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those that love him. When we become disciples of Christ, we become part of this, 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 this multitude of those who know Christ. We're being glorified. We're being transformed. We're being changed into the image of the Son that someday we would spend eternity with Him and be able to, to, to see Him in all of His glory and to experience that. We're being prepared for eternity. Verse 25. This is Jesus. And again, please don't miss this. If I'm walking through this. I don't want to miss. He, this is a heartfelt 
cry, a prayer to his father. And as he's leaving, I mean, these are going to be the things that are super important. As he's leaving the world, he's praying and asking his father these things. Here we are in verse 25. He says, O righteous father, the world doesn't know you, but I do. And these disciples know you sent me. I have revealed you to them, and I will continue to do so. Then your love for me will be in them, and I will be in them. This is that, that unity. Um, this, this, the disciples are, are, um, are being grown in their faith. Um, they, are, they, they, they understand or are understanding more of who God is. And he even points to the fact that um, he will continue to do so. What's he talking about? He's talking about leaving the Holy Spirit. That I'm going to continue to work in them. I'm going to continue to transform. I'm going to continue to grow. And God, I'm going to leave the Holy Spirit. And he is going to continue that work, that work that, that Jesus had done with the disciples. He's going to continue that work even more. And he's going to guide them into all truth. Right after these scriptures and this prayer, uh, Jesus goes to the garden. And, and it's actually where he's arrested. Um, and again, I, I find it, and I don't want us to miss the fact that this is the prayer before that. This is his heart. And this unity is so important to God. So, as disciples, and in, 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 in as I begin to dwell on us and think about this and prepare for it for the week, as a disciple, what does that mean? I mean, how do we stay in that perfect unity? I mean, it's just getting along, right? I mean, you know, like, like we did for the flood. It, it's just we, we on purpose get along. And, and guys, I, I don't want you to miss the fact. There was unity during the flood amongst the churches, not because we just decided to get along. It's because God's power showed up. And in him, by his power and strength, his unity, the unity that comes from him, showed up. And it's the same thing in your, your and my lives. I want to I look at what we've talked about for the past number of weeks. And I believe if you, as we review these, you'll see that, oh, yeah, I guess if as disciples, this is who we are and what we're about. Unity is going to show up. The first week we talked about what it meant to be fully committed. The second week we talked about what it meant disciples trusting God alone. They surrender in obedience. They're true worshipers. They remain in Christ. They're fed by him and provided for by him. When this is who we are as disciples, you know what the result is? Unity. <laughs> yes, there's an act of our will, but it's a re really the act of the will is turning to him and asking him to work in us. That God, I give you all of me. I'm going to entrust myself to you. I'm going to trust in you alone. God, I'm going to surrender and I'm going to be obedient to your teachings and your ways. God, I'm going to worship you with my life. Everything that you give me, my time, my talents, my resources, everything you entrust me, I, God, I'm, I'm, I'm going, those are going to be acts of worship. I'm going to view those as acts of worship. God, I'm going to remain in you. And God, I need you to remain in me. And I know my roots are going to go deep when that happens. And God, I'm going to be fed by you. I know you're going to provide for everything. In fact, beyond what I could ever ask or imagine. If, as this is who we are, the result, disciple this morning, is unity. We're about the same thing. And God is showing up. God is showing up. He's working in us and flowing through us. And I believe that people are led to him when we do that. So what's our focus, right? What's our focus as disciples? It's easy to get distracted. I get distracted. And we've had a lot of things to be distracted about. I'm not going to go into them. You, can, you know what I'm talking about in the last year and a half or two years on a lot of fronts. It's easy to get distracted. And the main thing no longer is the main thing. And these peripheral things we decide we're going to grab onto and hold onto, and they grab our attention, they grab our time, they grab our minds. And it's not what God has for us. As we look back at that list, right, that, that, that to be committed and trusting God alone and surrender, if that's where our focus is, the result is going to be unity. And the world will know that God sent his only son. That the love that God has will work in us and it will flow through us. I want to give you an example. Um, 
Christina, when she was a baby, I've shared this, I think, one or two times. She had, she continued to get um, UTIs, uh, urinary tract tract infections. Um, She was very, very young. I want to say two years old, maybe even a little before that. And, And we didn't know what to do. We went to the doctor and they had to cath her numerous times and they were trying to figure out what was going on. And it was actually a fear on our part that if this doesn't settle down, if they don't figure out what's going on, um, her kidneys are going to be affected and we could, we could be in a, a, a tough and difficult situation. The doctors talked to us about that. I believe that God was involved in that whole process and, and over the next number of months uh, when that started her body began to function the way it was supposed to function um, and so she didn't need some of the things that they were anticipating or, or fearing um, but but I remember during that time I didn't care what clothes Christina wore I didn't care how pretty her hair looked um, I didn't really care what shows or or toys or whatever that maybe we would put in front of her that she would enjoy. Um, Those things weren't front and center to me anymore. What was front and center, the focus was on her health. It had to be the main thing because without that, uh, she would not be able to enjoy any of the other things in her life. That's where our focus was. That's where the doctor's focus was. And I wonder sometimes in our lives as believers, the enemy doesn't throw things in our path and we lose focus. We end up discussing and debating, even within the body of Christ, those things that are not eternal. <laughs> They're just not eternal. And God's heart is that we would truly focus on being fully committed to him. That we truly focus on trusting in him alone that we would surrender in obedience to his word, to to be in the word and allow God to transform us and renew us, that with our lives, everything in our lives, that we would be worshipers, that we would be devoted to remain in him, to devour the word, to ask God to use that word, to, to bring things to our minds and our hearts, to convict us, to direct us, to empower us, to guide us, to lead us, that we be fed by him, knowing that he's a good father and that all that he has is ours. Church, I believe if we would focus there, that the world would know that God sent his son to die for their sins. May that be, as disciples, may that be the unity that God provides. May others be drawn to him. May they come to know him because we are disciples. Let's pray. God, thank you for your word this morning. And God, I ask that you would bring that word alive in our hearts and our minds. God, I know that I'm distracted by things. And God, it's not that they're not important, but they're not the most important. God, may may you guide me. May you guide us to those things that are the most important. Focus our minds and hearts on those things that are important to you. God, guide us and lead us. And I know, in fact, from this prayer, God, I know that as you walk with us, as you speak to us by the power of your Holy Spirit, as we are obedient, as we remain in you, as we, as we are guided and led by you, that God, we're going to end up in perfect unity because you are the one that we are following. So God, I ask that you would do that. And may the world know that you sent your Son. May they, be, may they come to experience the same love that we've experienced. And God, for what you've accomplished and what you will accomplish, we give you praise in Jesus' name. Each week, and, and we do this in person if you meet with us. Um, we do this online as well. We, we've, it's a responsibility. We feel um, it's important to, to uh, give you an opportunity, if you're not a follower of Christ, to start that journey today. Um, so if you find yourself and maybe you don't know Christ or maybe you've walked through some really difficult stuff and, and uh, 
you need to recommit your life to Christ. If you find yourself in either one of those places, I want to invite you to pray a prayer um, with me this morning. Let's, let's pray this prayer together. Lord Jesus, I need you. Thank you, God, for your love and your care. Thank you for dying on the cross to pay the price for my sins. By faith, I, I choose to follow you, God, to be your disciple. I want you to be my Savior and my Lord. Thank you for your forgiveness. God, I ask that you'd work in me, that you'd transform me into the person that you created me to be. I pray, God, that... Uh, your will would be accomplished in and through my life. Help me to stand firm. And God, help me to encourage others in their faith. Thank you, God, for the unity that you provide. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer this morning uh, with us, uh, we celebrate with you. We'd love to hear from you. Um, you can email us. You can uh, get a hold of us. If you happen to be here in person, grab us after the service. <clears throat> we really do want to come alongside and, and help in any way we can in your growth and your walk with God. Or maybe you're just going through a difficult time. Send us an email. Uh, give us a call at the church office. We would love to walk with you in that. We feel called to walk with you in that. I hope this series has been a uh, encouragement to you. We've got one more week. Next week, we're going to talk about what it means to, to be free as disciples, that we celebrate freedom and we fight for freedom. We invite you to join us in person if you're able to or online here. Thank you again for joining us today. I hope you have a great week.